Hello. So, I've been meaning to make a little editing tutorial for Linux for a little while, and now here's the start of it. <laughs> so, I've recorded a game already. It's a game of Gary's Mod Hide and Seek. I played with my friends. Here are the two things. This is actually the game recording here, and this would be a little cutscene that goes before the game over here. So, like, this will play across the screen and it'll show graphics and all that. And that's about it. It'll be before the game. And all the rest is just different attempts at trying to make the cutscene and they all failed. And this is a different cutscene entirely, where I kind of go around the map in a different way. Alright. So the first step for editing a video, at least the way I do it, is to fix up your microphone audio quality. Because chances are it's not as good as it can be. For various reasons. Usually background noise and you're really loud or really quiet at certain points. And you want to even that out. The first thing we gotta do is find a quiet part of the video. Like, let's think, let's find out if this is really quiet as it is, because it looks quiet based on the little waveforms. And here, there's a little bit of clicking in there of me clicking spastically for some reason. Is this at the very end of the video? Yeah, it is. Oh, one thing you should do is click up here, this little icon. It says, if you have, have your mouse, mouse over, it says Fit Project. Click that first, and your project will freeze. The reason it's doing this is because it's loading the entire project and drawing on the waveforms and making it so everything will be much faster in a second. But this first step takes a while. And this is just to load the project in so that everything will be smoother later. And also, and also if you zoom in and out before you clicked on that, everything would freeze every now and then. Okay, so now that that's happened, everything's more or less good. I'm going to click it again so that it zooms to the project. Right here, it looks to be a really quiet spot, so let's look. Am I just not here for this part? Looks like it. In this case, a really long stretch of quietness so I can get all the noise out is a good part. Yeah, there's really nothing there. All right, sweet. So what we want to do is click on effect, go to noise reduction, click, and click get noise profile. And that's just the first of it. Then we click on the whole thing by double clicking on the little timeline, click effect, Go to noise reduction again, and this time we want to click OK to reduce the noise. You can mess with these settings here. I'll include a link to the configuration settings for this so that you can mess with it in case you want to change it for some reason, but just click OK, and this may take a second. But the reason this is taking a long time for me because I recorded for literally an hour, so <laughs> it's quite a lot to go through. So, BRB. All right. So we fixed up all the noise, so now there's no background noise for the whole thing. My background noise wasn't actually that bad, but yours can be worse. And doing it anyways will get rid of any background noise whatsoever, because now when you look up here in a little graph, there's it doesn't bump at all. It's always down. Now, we fixed up the background noise, but now look at this. There's points where I'm really quiet here, and points where I'm ridiculously loud. Well, let's fix that. So select the entire clip again by double-clicking there. Go to Effect and go to Compressor. This is what we're going to use. Now these settings take a while to fiddle with, but basically anything above this point here, like vertically, and you control it with this thing right here, so anything above what's considered negative 32 decibels, but basically anything louder than, well, 32 decibels on here. It's weird. The graph is weird, but if it, when you make sounds, it goes up this way, on the graph, and if it goes above negative 32 right here, then it'll start making it quieter so that it kind of reaches 32 decibels right there. And anything quieter than negative 40 decibels will kind of just be filtered out entirely, like it doesn't exist. I'm going to actually increase that to 42, or not. Weird. It only goes in five increments. Anyways, and the ratio here is it gets, with what I have it set it to, it gets three times quieter. Not much about that. Attack time is how much time before the noise peak it goes to quiet it down. And release time is how much it keeps the quieting effect afterwards. In this case, oh, and one more setting. Make up gain for zero decibels after compressing. This sets it so, because when you do this, the whole audio will be quieter than it should be. And if you check that, then it amplifies the entire track to where the maximum volume possible will fit perfectly in the little graph here. So, you can mess with the settings on here. This is totally dependent on what you want from your video. This is just what I found to work over time. So, okay. And this also takes a little bit. 
All right, looks like that finished up, and now look at the audio. No really huge peaks at all. It's pretty constant throughout. Let's see how it sounds. Looks like I am the Seeker, along with Austin and everyone yeah. else. Sounds pretty cool. And also louder than my voice. What the heck? <laughs> oh, well. Now. Now, we're pretty much done with the audio here. I'm just going to save it again. And then now we got to... Well, I just hit Control S to save it. You can go save Project As and save it and do all that kind of stuff. But now I'm going to export the audio so that we can mess with it in our video editor. In that case, I did not record a CSGO video. I recorded a hide and seek video into here. I'm going to save it as mic.flack. Flack files. Basically, you're wanna gonna use wanna gonna use. I'm not sure if that was proper English, but you want to use either like a FLAC file or a WAV file. Basically, anything lossless to encode your audio is. I find FLAC files to work the best. They're reasonably fast and keep the file size kind of small. And the reason you want it lossless is so that the audio actually sounds good. So <laughs> let's keep it there. And there's options here. I'm gonna have it encode at the best level. You only need the 16-bit bit depth. Unless you know you need 24-bit for some reason. So I'm pretty sure YouTube only takes 16-bit, so I'm going to keep it there. And save it as mic, and it automatically adds the file extensions. You just hit save. Oh, and you can add your metadata to it if you want. And click OK. And 30 more seconds. Cool. All right, we're done encoding that. We can just quit out of here because we're done with that. And that's great. One more thing I'm going to do is to take out the game audio from this. And the reason I'm doing that is because the audio right now is saved as lossless inside of this video. And that's fine and all, but trying to import it into Blender afterwards is going to be really, really slow. So I'm going to take it out by using a nice little FFmpeg command here. I think I already have it kind of loaded up. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's change that to actually be the right file name. I'll paste this command in the comments below, or comments in the description, but it's really simple to do. All you're doing is exporting it to another FLAC file like that there, and that's that's really it. This will take a little while, because the, the audio in the video is uncompressed, which means it's a really huge audio file, and this will bring it down to a compressed but still lossless audio file, so everything will be all nice. Anyway, this will take a little bit too. Because this is an hour long video, so you can get it from there, but still gonna be a while. BRB. It looks like it's about to finish. Past the one hour mark. And done. Alright, so now we have the game video almost completely processed. Actually, it is completely processed, because we got the game up, audio, microphone. And the game video, we don't need to process and keep it as is. And then this is just for a cutscene at the beginning, which I can edit with later. All right, so in that case, let's go make a nice little game folder. All right, now that we got the audio to finish encoding out of the game, we can, well, go ahead and edit the video. So I made a little folder here, but it has nothing in it. So what we got to do is open up Blender. Let's start by, you know, Alt F2, oh, and Alt F3. Blender. Let's open it up. Blender is pretty sweet to download. It opened immediately. That's cool. And okay. <laughs> In that case, what we're first going to do is maximize it. And then select everything. I just double tapped A, hit delete because we don't need it. And change. Click on right here. Little cube down here. Change it to the video sequence editor. And here we are. We're going to want to click on this right here, where it has that checkerboard texture thing, kind of like right there, and the weird strip things on top of each other. So this is just a combination of these two views, which is the video will appear up here, and these are the video strips, which we don't have any of. And now we got to set up the video format, which is over here on the right. So depending on your resolution, you're going to want to set this be your X resolution, this be your Y resolution. This should always be 100%, especially for video editing. Over on frame rate, we're going to change this to whatever frame rate you have your video recorded at. Be it any of these, I have recorded at 60, so let's use that. And end frame, put to something ridiculously high because we're not going to set it until we're done editing the video. Down here on output, 
we're not gonna mess with it because we aren't gonna really output the video just yet. I'll set it up a little bit later. I don't know, I'm not sure there's much else I actually have to change here. I think we're more or less done because that because it's just that. Yeah. Alright, in that case, let's get the videos on here. Oh, oh, we gotta save it first. I hit control S and go up here to file, save as, or save. So I'm gonna save it. Go into the hide and seek folder. There it is. Hide and seek. And save it as hide and seek one. Save. Save. All right, now we got saved. Make sure you save often because Blender, if it crashes, you don't want to lose everything. It actually doesn't have a tendency to crash, not really anymore. All right, so let's open up our little hide and seek folder. See, we have it saved there now. And let's go to a raw folder and have the videos ready. Now, what I'm going to do first, copy in the cutscene, because that is going to happen first. Let's see, I think I want this one. This is the cutscene I want. Let's get that in there. Yeah, that's the one I want. I'm not going to use the sound from the cutscene. The light blue is the sound, the dark blue is the video, so let's get rid of the sound. So that's how it'll kind of start off. I'll cut that up in a second, but I'll show you what we're going to have to do first. And now let's add the game video. Yet again, move you over. I'm going to put the audio on top because that's how I like to do things. Set this up just right. Put the frame on the exact start. Get rid of the game audio because we have our own version of it right there. And let's get our microphone audio right there. That's all done. Now we're going to want to set up the editor so that we can edit videos, uh, well, properly. We're going to want to have this out on the right here. I'll show you where it is. There's a little plus thing right there. You can kind of see it. Just pull that out because we're going to use it for literally everything. But right now we're not going to use it. What we're going to use is go to Strip. Never mind. Go to View. <laughs> go to Waveform Drawing. And turn Waveforms on. This will let you see the audio much more clearly. This will take a little bit to generate. Shouldn't take too long because you exported it as a flag file, which Blender can actually handle pretty fast. It was already done. So, hey, that was an hour long video and it took like maybe five seconds to process all the audio. That's cool. And now we're gonna go down to view somewhere down here, playback. Jeez, I am not on my game right now. So playback, go up to audio scrubbing and click it. This lets us hear the audio when we move along the timeline like that without playing. And now let's go to playback and go to AV sync. This will keep the audio and video synced no matter what the frame rate it's playing at. Which is pretty important so you know when things happen. I don't think there's much else to do there. No. I don't think so. I think that's more or less done there. All right, now we're going to have to set up the video and video proxies. Video proxy, which you go to here, it's on the right here. There's a reason we had that open. You just scroll down a little ways. Make sure you have the video selected. Go down to proxy, check it. And I'm gonna change this to the entire project. I'm gonna set the proxy directory. That's what that is. Proxy directory. Change it to forward slash forward slash proxy forward slash. The double forward slash basically means that we're using the directory the project is saved in, the folder that it's saved in, which is this folder this is where the proxy folder will go and for the proxy video which is just a lower quality video we can use to edit with so that the frame rate isn't horrible i'm going to have it be a 25 percent video 25 percent size video and 90 percent jpeg quality so we're going to set the selected strip proxies to 25 percent there i'm going to click on that one too enable it set it 25% there, click OK. Now they're both set. Yep. Same thing. Yeah, it's the same exact thing. In that case, let's change this and just click on Rebuild Proxy and Timecode Indices. This will take a while. Well, the first video is not going to take a while because it's a short video, but the second video will take a while. So hang around for this. Yeah, BRB. Oh, it only built that one. Well, you can give you a taste of what it looks like. You're going to want to scroll down a little bit to view settings and change the proxy render size to the proxy you used up here, which I use 25%. So here we are. You can see it looks much, 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 much more pixelated. 
which is something you probably don't want in the final video, but for editing, yeah, we're going to have to, or else we're going to deal with horrible frame rate. I'm going to hit refresh sequencer, and look at that. Really close to 60 frames per second. And if I go to the other video here, if I even use the proxy 25%, and I play the video. Oh, shoot. Get like, <laughs> can one of you invite me? 13 frames or per wait, second. Or wait, maybe I can find So, that's bad. So I'm going to click over here, and on the second video, I'm going to rebuild proxy entanglement indices for this video too. Hit it. And that one will take much, much longer. Much, much longer, as in that will probably take 10-ish minutes, maybe 15, especially for an hour-long video. Whatever. You'll see the time difference down here. BRB. All right, we're getting pretty close to finishing the proxy on this. Took... A little while. I don't know. Sorry, my voice is kind of going away. I have a bit of a cold thing going on. No close to finishing. No close. We're right there. Oh, wow. Now we're actually are done, but apparently we're not done thanks to Blender. It's amazing. Oh, okay. We're done with the proxy. And now the game looks flawless. Even right showing now, so runs, I'm at not frames, runs at 60 frames per second, and you can hear that more than you can hear me, so I'm going to turn down the volume for that more. Well, Alright, right. huh? you can hear me well. better now. <laughs> Pretty important. What, Austin? The ping is low, I counted. I'm going to have to go to the bathroom. Alright, so let's go find out where the video should start. So this is the fun thing, <laughs> and we'll cut up the cutscene right before the video. Let's go find out a good spot. So yeah, here. right. I'm not gonna bore you with me looking through the video for parts. And when I need to do something interesting, I'll show you guys how I do it. So BRB. Heard you guys are crying salty tears. One thing I forgot to do was sync up the audio. So let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna have to do some crazy syncing things. Okay. One. Okay, I'm gonna have to do some crazy syncing things. Oh shoot! <laughs> Can one of you invite me? Have You're going some... me. No, all right. I disabled shift tab. Yeah. I'm You're going some... me. No, all right. I disabled shift tab so that my recording wouldn't bug out. Uh, you noob. There it is. Oh, there it is. Damn it. You. Dude, I'm just it's not even right showing. Now, so I'm not. We have to do some. Okay, I'm gonna have to do this. I think that syncs it up. Maybe find out here in a second because I think it recorded the game first. One. Okay. Uh, Alex has a horrible spot. Although I'm helping him, so it's not so horrible anymore. Now it is. <laughs> Oh god! Well, I can probably sync it up just with that. <laughs> and I freak out. Hey, how you guys doing? Where are you guys? See here? Uh, Alex has a horrible spot, although I'm helping him, so it's not so horrible anymore. Okay, that's when I freak out. <laughs> See how this looks. More. Now it is. Oh, oh god. Oh, oh god. god. <laughs> Alex, cried, you're done. Cried, cried, no, 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 JJ, don't come find me. Don't come find me. Hey, hey, JJ. Austin. What's this interesting thing over here? What is this? <laughs> okay, stop talking in game. It's just horrible. It's delayed. <laughs> All right, so it looks like it's all synced up. Normally, I have something to go along with to sync it up, but I guess not that time. All right, that's probably the point I'm going to use to get in. Let's see here. Okay, this is what I think I'm going to use the audio from here for the cutscene, but I'm not going to use the video. <laughs> it starts off. Now I'll add a bunch of video effects for the cutscene at the beginning. So hey, so let's see. Move you up, actually. All right, who's hiding? 
hide that video there. I hit H. Let's see what it looks like over the cutscene. Right, who's hiding? Or seeking? Uh, this is actually the wrong map, I just realized. Oh. <laughs> we'll do something about that, who knows. Shoot. In that case, get out of their video. <laughs> should probably realize what map I'm playing right, on hiding? before. Oh or gosh. Um, I just realized this is a very long playthrough session, and there's a bunch of different maps. So we might need to split this up, or I can keep it as one sort of compilation. I'll keep it as a compilation. Let's go look. Alright, who's hiding? Or seeking? Um, hey, us. Okay, Alex, let's, let's go. Oh, is it the okay, let's cut that there. What I did to cut the video is they press K. Interesting little cut technique. It's really just, I held down shift, I selected all the videos there, and then I press K, and it cut it where it was, and I'm going to use this left hand sign for part of the video. I'm going to keep cutting this up, see what kind of interesting parts I can find. So far, not much. So you can hear a slap sound effect here of my friend getting caught right here in the video. You see the V kind of disappears, or the little blue thing there. So I'm going to put a nice little text effect there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new scene. So I'm going to do copy settings, same settings. I'm going to put the end frame down to one, so it's just one frame long. I'm just rendering one picture for this. And this will be using the cycles renderer in Blender. Uh, I'm going to name this text. What I did there was create a new scene. I'm going to rename this scene to be VSC. So I know which one's what. Let's go back to text. We put this as GPU compute so it works fast. And there's not much more I do on the right. Seems okay. And change this to a 3D view. All right, this is where Blender gets blendery and I add effects and stuff. So I'm gonna add text, career text. Pretty simple, I hit seven there on the keypad to center it on top, like I did there. So if it's off totally like that, I can just hit that and it automatically goes over. So I'm gonna go to the text here, little F for the font, set it to be in the center. And I need to add a camera. So let's add a camera, hit seven again, and press Control alt zero to set the camera where my position is. I'm gonna change this camera over from a perspective camera to an orthographic camera, which just changes how things work. Because in orthographic, if you change how far away it is, then it doesn't change the size of the text. But in perspective, which I need to select a camera for, perspective camera, it totally changes the size of the text. That's the only real difference. Let's go back to the camera. Do the orthographic. <laughs> Let's set the scale. The scale's okay. I'll keep it as is. And I'm going to turn this into... that make it look like a little effect this set the this right here is the material well what I did to change the font is I press tab tab changes the font there now I'm gonna add a nice little material for it so I'm gonna go to the material tab here which is just kind of the circle with the checkerboard hit new and it should automatically give you the fuse BSDF which is a type of shader I'm gonna set this to be sort of I'm gonna set it to be a red effect because the red guy hitting him have it, yeah, that looks fine. Keep everything as is. And here we are, we have a nice little text effect. Actually, we have one more thing to do. Go to World, right there, and hit New. Have that, keep that at background, but change the color here to pure white, which basically means just going on that all the way up until every single one of these here is one. So now, if we render the image, for example, it has a perfectly white background. I forgot to change one more thing. Go to your little camera thing here, the render tab settings. Go down to film and change this to be on. Make sure it's transparent. Now if we go to render it, there is no background and the slap is there. So that's what we're making is a transparent image with this little slap on it. But we're still not done. I mean, we can be done, but I'm gonna make it look nicer. So I'm gonna go click on here, which is render layer. Actually, wait, no, I'm gonna keep on the render tab and go to freestyle and check that box. And I'm gonna go over here. Yeah, that's already set up, line thickness one pixel. Looks all right. 
now we go to the render layer tab. See freestyle line set, we're gonna add one add here. What freestyle does is it adds lines to the outlines, make it look more cartoony. In this case we're adding an outline to the text to make it look nicer. So everything's already set up actually pretty nice. Now we're just gonna go to freestyle line style and change the thickness over here to be actually we're gonna keep it as is. I think everything on here by default is pretty nice. So I'm just gonna hit render, see what we get. It's gonna render it and then it's gonna do stroke rendering and it is tiny. Let's do something about that tiny, tiny little stroke render it did. Thickness, set that to 6 instead. Render it. Looks nicer. But we're going to be zoomed in on it pretty far, so it's going to be really like that far away. Which is alright, actually, now that I look at it. So we're going to save it. So I'm going to go to Image down here, Save as Image. I'm going to hit new folder here name it res for resources click in here and name it something descriptive like slap and save as image saved it in a folder for hide and seek so this is what the folder looks like now there's a nice little proxy folder here for the videos and a res folder with the resources such as the slap image so now i'm going to go back to the vsc on here so i'm going to go here click on vsc go down here change it to the video sequence editor and click drag over to slap right there and it didn't show up one second let me try that again there we are sometimes it doesn't work the first time and you realize it completely replaces it so that's not good but what we're gonna do is add I'm gonna have this selected hit shift a effect strip transform and on the transform selected I'm gonna go up here to blend and change it the alpha over there we are look it's over it but totally in the wrong place so that's why I have it as a transform I'm gonna check the uniform scale here so that it scales both X and Y at the same time Get it down to something that looks all right looks like 0.5 will look okay and set the position uh, actually I'm gonna what I did is I hit I I hit I when it's hovering over that, and I'm inserting a keyframe right there, because I'm going to have this fade away and go up at the same time. So that sort of like an effect of motion. I'm going to set this to be 60 frames long. So I clicked on the this one right here, went the length, hit 60. I know I'm moving kind of fast, but I don't want to spend too long on this. And you can just pause it and kind of look over exactly what I did with my mouse. And I try to explain everything I hit my keyboard. Okay, so we go back on here. So we have these. I hit I on each of these. Just have my mouse over it and I hit I for inserting a keyframe. And I'm going to go to the very end. Oh, wait. Let's see how far. I heard it. No, I'm going to have this just be 30 frames long or 45 frames long. Okay. I'm going to go to the very. Let's see here. What I'm going to do is go until that playhead hits 30. Because it'll be moving up. This, I'm going to make it so it moves up and fades out, but for the first 30 frames, it's still 100% opaque, as in it's still there. So at this point, we can keyframe the opacity up here. So I hit I on that, and, well, that's about it. And now we go to the very end, which in this case, the playhead would be 45, or your line would be on the very end of it here. You won't actually see it in the very end, so you just kind of have to guess it at this point. So opacity at this point, zero, so it's completely not visible, so you can see how it doesn't fade in, but the thing just changed. If you go back here, refresh sequencer, oh, still not fading out, why is it not? Oh, it's because I'm on the wrong thing, whoops, uh, clear keyframes, it shouldn't be on that one, we should be on that one, opacity, perfect, and now zero. Now if we go back, we can see it fade. So it fades out, but that's not the only effect we're doing. We're also changing the Y coordinate. In that case, I'm going to go I'm gonna go back a few frames, see which way's up. That way's up. I'm going to change it to negative 20. Hit I. There we are. That little fade. But you can see how it how it's fading right now. It starts off really slow moving up, then it speeds up. It's fastest at the midpoint, and then it slows down at the end. So what I'm going to do is have it go to constant rate up instead of doing its weird sort of fast, slow, or slow, fast, and slow patterns doing right now. In that case, we're going to have to go into the curve editor. 
So I'm gonna do that. You might have saw what I clicked there. Oh, if you scroll down enough, you're gonna have to redo that. Because I don't know why, it's just weird. But I'm gonna what I did there is I clicked on the corner and dragged down to create a new window. So I'm gonna go over here, go to the graph editor, and you get a big scary graph. So here's where our effect happens. I'm gonna hit normalize so that we can see how to edit things. It didn't really normalize it very well at all. What the heck. Well, that's interesting. Anyways, what I want to change is the translate Y. I want to change the mode it's using. So I have, I'm going to hit A, make sure I have, oh, I'm going to make sure I, well, just click on here, actually. That actually sets it. Just click on translate Y, go to key, go to interpolation type, and I'm going to have it just be linear at this point. So that it just goes up at a constant speed. Oh, 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 God. That was, good night, Lino, it looks okay. And you might want to keep this open if or not. Depends on what you want to do. I'm going to get it off screen because I, I just can open it again. But hey, there's our first effect. Oh, oh, oh god. That was, that was really close. I'm going to set the scale on this a little bit smaller. Here we are. Oh, oh, oh god. That was, that was really close. Here we are. First effect. All right, let's continue on. I heard, I heard someone get slapped. Oh shoot! You're nearby. Oh, oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Okay, right oh. there. You got another one. I heard, I heard someone get slapped. Oh shoot! You're. Look, I turn around, see the red guy right there. If I turn off proxy size to be full, no proxy full render, you can see it pretty clearly right there. Look at that. There's a guy. He's coming after you. He's mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flat out freeze the video right there and slowly zoom in on it to show how I'm like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. And then immediately me freaking out and trying to get away. So I'm going to go slightly more to the point where I just about freak out. About right there. I don't need to be exactly on, but I need to be reasonable. And I'm going to cut the video right there. Everything. What's this doing here? Is this, is this part of the... Oh, I think I know what that is. Let's get that out of there. One second, I put my video on the wrong frames. There we are. Now it's on the very bottom frame level. Jeez. Sorry about that. Let's go here to right where I freak out. I'm going to go forward one. Cut again. I'm going to move you way over to about right there. I'm going to cut out the sound on both of those. And you, I'm going to add a speed control on that tiny little frame. And on the speed control, on the right, over here, I'm going to multiply speed by zero. So that it just stays on the same frame the whole time. Nice little effect, huh? How long should I make it? should make it about 120 frames. Two seconds. It is okay. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't type in a number there. It doesn't like it when you type in numbers for some reason. So let's go manually move it. You can hold down shift while moving to make it move at finer increments so you can get exact numbers like I did there. And here we are. Might add like a siren effect. Later in sound. All right, so let's add transform. So at frame number zero of this transform i'm gonna have it scale have it be exactly like it is now and i'm gonna have it zoom in kind of slowly onto it have it scale to three times let's have this at one oh sorry i'm gonna have to view the whole thing here I'm scale it four times Here we are that looks okay insert 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 and i actually did a trick here i'm not actually on the last frame i'm one before the last frame but there's a way you can change it so it is on the last frame is to do this little thing up here again so click on here and this time change it to the dope sheet which is pretty dope but kind of 
So what I'm going to do is go over here. So you can see every single keyframe in your entire video here. What I'm going to do is click only on the three I have here. So this is the keyframes I just edited, and this is where I want them to be. So I can just hit G to move them, X to move it along the X axis, and one. So now it's on the very last frame. So hey, that's nice. I watch it now. I have to zoom in and freak out. I'm actually going to change this to be 180 frames long. In that case, I should move you over. 60. That's not 60. Oh yeah, it is 60. Exactly where it ends. All right, let's see what it looks like now. Okay, I'm gonna change the way that this zooms in on it. I'm gonna shift click on all of these, go to key, go to interpolation mode, and this time, I'm gonna have it go really fast, or actually slow at first and speed up over time. So, be sort of like an exponential curve, I think. Actually, I'm not gonna do it this way. I'm gonna go into the graph editor. Let's go look here, on here, graph editor. Yeah, F curve. I have the thing selected, don't I? Oh, it's on that frame. Make sure you have the right clip selected. All right, here we are. So it should start kind of slow, but speed up really fast at the end. So let's click the end keyframe and rotate you so that it's just really fast at the end. <laughs> so hey, look, now it goes perfectly vertical. So it's going really, really fast and suddenly stops. So let's so see what this looks like. Oh, it, that, that didn't work out very well. Oh, it's because I'm only changing one thing at a time. Should probably look at everything. Oh gosh, normalize. Here we are. Okay, this one, rotate 90 degrees. Same thing there. And for X, go up here. Wrong one. Rotate 90 degrees again. And now everything should work out. Let's go take a look. Let's go extend you another 60 frames so that it stops. Okay, you can see it there. Stops. You can see the horror in my eyes. Extended another 60 frames. Okay, I'm going to have to really change the frames on this one. Go back to dope sheet, select these three. We'll change it back 60 frames so it's only two seconds going in there and three seconds hold. Look again. And then like alert, 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 and then oh, be oh freaking god. out. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Alright, I'm gonna turn the proxy back on. So go over here. Proxy 25% because I don't need it anymore. I only needed it for a second. Move the clip back over so we can kinda see how it looks again. Oh, oh, god. oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. I'm gonna add a nice little zoom sound effect here. So let's go look up zoom sound effects and get that up there so that we can see the whole clip timeline. Alright, so this is where the fun stuff begins. You gotta look online for sound effects. The best things ever. Luckily, YouTube actually provides a pretty good library of sound effects and music with all the libraries for them. Here we are. So let's go to you. Hey, you. Two. Tube.com forward slash, I think, create. Let's see here. No, this is just this little thing there. Readers. This is not very helpful. One second, guys. I'll go look for it. All right, I found out where it is. You got to click up here on YouTube, go to your creator studio, and on the very left, just create tab and find audio library is what we're looking. You got free music, add supported music so you can see what the current things are on music so on here you can see exactly sorry by justin bieber you can see what kind of restrictions you have on there hey there's your restriction restrictions if you use that particular song for some reason there's sound effects which what i want here is a zoom sound effect so let's go look it up swoosh there is a swoosh sound effect let's find out what it sounds like hey 
hey, that actually works. And there's multiple versions of it, so I'm gonna have to cut it up. Let's go download you, save file. There we got it saved. That's copied over to our resource folder. Let's see, that's not it. That is over. Come on, whatever. Oh, and it crashed. Okay, one second. I don't know why that did that. It's not there. In res. All right, there it is. What I tried to do was. Oh, it doesn't like this anymore. Show all downloads. Wow, I really screwed things up. So what I'm going to do here instead. Let's try to. Okay. Well, it's saved in your downloads and you can copy it over to your resource folder one way or another. So I have it here. What I got to do is open it in Audacity and change it again to actually fit what I'm trying to do. Let's take a look. All right, so it looks like it gave us three swish effects or zoom sound effects. Let's see if this one's good. No. That one's pretty good. Let's use that one. Oops. Okay, let's select right before. Yeah, that's good enough. Go there. That looks like the end of the audio. Go there. And let is let us cut that out, exit out, paste it in. Here we are. There's a swish sound effect. Let's export you directly back on our swish sound effect. Well, exactly how long is that? Two seconds long. It actually fits our zoom perfectly. That's really lucky. Let's see if it has a flack file. Sure, swish.flack. The perfect audio file. And let's get out of here. I don't want to save my changes. So I'm going to get rid of the original switch there. So now we got our audio there. So let's move you over there so I can copy you easier. All right, so click here, drag it over, and there's our switch. Now I can add like an alarm sound effect, maybe. Oh, shoot. You're. See if I can find an alarm. Alarm clock, ambulance, ambulance, ambulance. Sorted. Wow, this is going to take a second. Maybe I can use this. I've used this beep short before, actually, in one of my other videos. So I'm going to open this. Actually, this one I don't need to edit at all. It's perfect the way it is. So let's, oh, let's go. Let's go to my homepage. Yeah, I've already downloaded it before. Let's copy it over to my resource folder again. It Firefox does not like it when you click and drag over to your folders. I don't know why. It works, but it doesn't like it. Name you to just be beep. Like, wow, why are you so crashy? Maybe it's just crashy in general. All right, so we got our audio there. Now we got our beep again. So let's add a little beep sound effect. Beep. Get rid of that there. How long does beep sound effect last? Out to there is where I'll use it for. What offset is that? 45? Good enough. Get rid of that one. That one. Let's see what it sounds like. Let's try that again. Oh, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. There's sound effects. Now let's add it. Visual effects. Like the cool people we are. I'm gonna get rid of that. Pull you back down a little bit. Alright, I'm gonna move this audio thing I have going on here up a little bit and let's go back to our I'm gonna duplicate the window here so I don't have to switch bet so switching between won't be as hard go to our text effect and change it this time that's our new effect woo we're gonna make it cool and all that stuff anyways this one will stay the same red so let's render it again Enemy detected. Perfect image. 
Give us image. Enemy. Save. Give us image. And here we are. That's how we do things. Let's go back to our other blender window. And bring our enemy detect a sound effect in. In that case, I think it needs to be exactly 180 frames long. It should alpha over. Well, it looks like this one's not even going to work, so I'm just going to instead go to effect and go to little transform. Change that to alpha over. Scale you down a little bit. 50%. Should be alpha over this. But why is this not? I'll set the alpha over. Bounce to replace. Let's hide that one. Okay, that's what it was. I got. I had to hide the speed modifier there. All right. So if you for some reason get missed weird bugs like that one is, just hide whatever you're not using. For example, I am using the speed, but not to actually display on screen. I'm using this to display on screen. So I just hid the speed modifier there and the original video, and it went back to being normal. Let's change the transform on there. I'm going to set that to negative 60 for now. Set that on this one. I'm going to set it up to there. You can see what it looks like now. Nearby, oh, oh, god. oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh jeez, oh jeez. Who are you running hey, from? Hey, hey, would you, would you like to, would you like to... Uh... Here we are, that's our transform. <laughs> yeah, let's go see what our transform is at the very end here. I want to try something. I can't exactly duplicate that very well. I can take that, and I can copy the settings of it. Okay, I'm going to try to add... A transform to the very beginning of that clip. In that case, I'm going to need to use an adjustment layer, which is a nice little effect. So I'm going to move you. Actually, I got to move you over one. That is off one frame for some, one second, for some reason. There we are. The one frame offingness is now fixed. So at that point, we will go straight into the adjustment layer, which will last 30 seconds long, and we'll take this transform, settings from that transform, and kind of copy it over to that one. I think I can do, if I shift click on there and there, if I do copy to selected on that one, that one, and then this one, where is it? There's copy to selected. If I go over here on this one, we'll go look at the transform. That should be uniform. I forgot to copy that to selected. And this one should be alpha over. No, this one should replace. So at this point, it should reset everything. Oh, I forgot to actually copy it over. Let's try that again. Who selected? I don't. I'm not sure if that'll work exactly. Yeah, it did. Again. Who selected? Who selected? Okay, let's fix up all the problems I just did. Now if I play, oh, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, perfect. So, hey, video effects, slowly adding more and more. There's your second video effect, slightly more in depth, does a nice little zoom effect, it's little beeps, nothing too amazingly oh, special dear. about it. But it's there. Oh, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh jeez, oh jeez. Who are you running hey, from? Might be able to add a nice little effect saying, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, with text going up slowly, 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 and changing to OGs, like what I was doing there. Might be able to do something funny with that, too. Hey, make it. Let's do it. We can do it forever. So let's go back to our text thing. Let's see. Oh god, that's what I did first. Change that to blue, because we've just been using red the whole time. There's no real good reason to use this as blue for now have it like that, render it, uh, image, save as image, 
Oh, God. Not PNG. Save as image. And let's immediately edit the image to say, geez, like I did there. Pull it up a tiny bit. Render image. Image. Save as image. Oh, geez. <laughs> and done there. So let's go take a look at how this looks in here. I gotta add it up. So what's the first thing I say? Oh gosh, the first thing I say. Let's start it here. And that's what I use audio scrubbing for, so you can hear it. Oh god, oh god you can hear it. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh jeez. So I say it one, two, three, four, five, six times. That's interesting. So I'm gonna have it start there and go all the way to there. So what I'm gonna do is kind of have it push in from the bounce to say, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, and slowly push off screen from the bottom up all the way up. So let's see how that looks. So I gotta add a transform, have it alpha over, and start completely off screen. So I'm gonna set up the uniform scale. 0 0.75 and get you off screen. Uh, negative 50 works. And let's have it there. Back up to zero. Actually, we're going to have you go to there. Let's see how this works. Say, oh god. And I duplicate it over to the next one where I say, oh god again. Change you over to over it. Okay, let's, let's do this so I can see everything. Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, geez. gonna get really slow for a second because once you have this many effects stacked up on top of each other they tend to hide they, well they tend to lag pretty bad okay let's go down here there's the last one okay and they have it completely cut off here with everything I'm gonna select everything here I hit B there for a box select select everything Cut. Did I hit cut? K. Cut, cut, cut. Oh, it froze. So one second, guys. This is why you freeze off, or freeze. This is why you save often. Oh God, what happened? What did I do? I broke it, guys. You gotta be careful with Blender. It doesn't like it when you break it. Oh, it made completely freaking crashed. All right, let's go open up it again and see just how far behind we are now. Okay, so I just rendered OGs, and that's all I've done. In that case, I'm going to make a nice little oh god counter so it doesn't crash again. One second. Maybe I can have it fly across the screen every time. Okay, let's add this. Transform. Uniform scale. 0.75, like I had. Roll you off screen for a second. Negative 45 sounds good. Push you up to there, and now zero. Not really up there. Just fifteen works good. That is wrong. Fifteen, negative fifteen. All right. So let's see how this works. This is oh god. the same. Oh god! Oh god! Oh well, I gotta alpha over. Make sure you set your blend methods right. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god. I'm gonna move you over actually, so that you look a little nicer. Oh, oh god, oh god. Let's go add you there about. So I'm gonna just flat out start hiding these things immediately afterwards. I'm gonna hide that by default. So that they don't affect the 
way it works so that I can get it to work right. In this case, this one's going to go from all the way off screen. That way. All the way up there. <laughs> I just did something by accident there, but I'm going to have it go into there instead. And I go around, just rotate it slightly. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Hide you. Oops. And unhide you. All right, let's see what we can do here. Stop there. All right, now you're going to start. You're actually going to stay there. Got cleared keyframes there. You're going to start off to the left. in to there. We'll start with zero rotation. <laughs> Let's see how this keeps working. We gotta keep adding more. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh
Let's see. Our masterpiece. I'm gonna save this again. Save. Make sure you constantly save. All right, let's see what this looks like. Fantastic. I rendered the image, and it looks insane, which is part of what I'm trying to go for. <laughs> oh, jeez. This looks ridiculous. I'm just going to do it for the oh god. Okay, let's save here, refresh sequencer, let's see what oh, it looks oh like. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh jeez, oh jeez. Who are you running hey, from? Hey, hey, would you, would you like to, would you like to, uh, paint can? Shoot. He saw where I went, <laughs> he saw where I went, he saw where I went. I don't, I think I lost him, I think I lost him, I think I lost him. Oh, oh god, no! No, go away, go away! <laughs> like a horror scene behind me. No one likes you. I, don't, I think I lost him. I think I lost him. I think I lost him. Oh, oh God, no! No, go away! Go <laughs> away! Sounds like a horror scene behind me. No one likes you. Uh, wait, did you not see me? Oh, thank God. Have they ever seen? All right, I think I'm only going to show you this much of editing the video because it's pretty much just a lot of editing, just like that for most of it. I'm going to come back in a little bit once I'm done with the video and show you how to export the video in the end. That's basically how I edit videos the whole way through, so hey, good luck. I'll be back soon. Alright, I did not finish editing the video, but I'm going to show you how you set up export settings. What I did right now is I added a little bit of effects, mostly just the OGs at the end, and made it so that the oh gods slide off at the end. That's the only real difference I did, so you can see here. Scroll in there, you see they slide off. And I added an OG's thing that flies across. <laughs> so that's about all I've done so far, but <clears throat> I'm gonna show you how you can render it for output settings and what you're wanting you want to use. So basically, output. I'm gonna change this to forward forward slash out forward slash. So it's the same exact idea with a proxy, just saving in a directory called out, which will be put here as soon as you start. That full screen. And we're going to change this from PNG over to H.264. That is the best codec you could use. It's RGB. This is the only thing where Blender is kind of iffy on. I'm going to change it over to Matroska because it supports literally everything you throw at it. You can use lossless output if you want. I don't know if it's a good idea. It could be a good idea. In fact, I'm going to do that right now. So you can either choose lossless or you can set up the bitrate to something ridiculously high. That's actually not the maximum. You can type in the maximum. There you are. I'm going to set it. I'm going to keep it there, but I'm going to put it at lossless. But this is pretty much as much as you can handle with your upload speed. And if you're going to do it lossless, I'm going to re-encode it afterwards to where it will be much smaller afterwards. Audio codec. I'm going to choose FLAC for this one. Maximum bit rate. I don't really put that. I usually put it like this one plus 10%-ish. I'm actually going to do it a little bit more than 4, 10%. Give it a whole extra 10 kilobits, 10,000 kilobits, 10 megabits to work with. GOP size, I'm going to put that up the max I can put it to. Normally, you want it to be 2 times frame rate, but I don't think Blender supports more than 100, so keep it at 100. And that, you can just max it out. I don't think it does anything for FLAC. But because I'm rendering lossless, I don't think much of that actually applies. It just renders straight to H.264 lossless with the FLAC audio, which is also lossless. So I render the animation, what I have so far, it'll take a little bit. The only problem with lossless output, which I'm going to cancel right here and show you, if I go to out right here, that like maybe one second took up 35 megabytes. And it's really slow. So maybe don't do lossless. <laughs> In that case, let's uncheck lossless. I'm going to put it at what it is right now. I'm going to keep it as it is and render again, render animation much faster. Well. Pretty darn fast. Not much, much fast. Eh, it's way better. Look at that. Only three megabytes. Not even for the amount, that amount of time. So let's go see what this looks like. Let's see if I can scroll out to the whole thing so we know exactly how much time we have. So rendering is semi-slow, especially if you're doing effects like that, seeing the frame rate kind of dropped up there. But hey, you can see exactly what it looks like while you're doing it. So you know what it's you know gonna be like. 
All right, I'll be back soon. It's not going to take too long to render. All right, finished rendering. Took a little while, but that's a uh, blunder. It's not the fastest thing in the world. It's not too slow, though. Anyway, here's the video file we got. It's 100 megabytes, so let's go take a look at it. Paint cans. Let's go. All right, who is this? Oh, oh, oh God. That was, that was really close. I, he I heard someone get slapped. Oh, shoot. You're... Oh, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh jeez, oh jeez. Who are you running hey, from? Hey, would you, would you like to, would you like to, uh, pink can? Hey, I mean that pretty nice. Oh Jesus, flew by pretty quick, but hey, not that bad. So, normally when you upload a video, it won't be that short, so your upload pink might cans. take a little while, because what is this? Right, who is this? It was 27 seconds and 100 megabytes, and if you have a 10 a minute video, then it's suddenly 2,000 megabytes, so a 2 gigabyte upload is not a very fun upload. So what we can do here is re-encode the video. I'm going to put in a nice little ffmpeg command here. I Let's do a video codec. The video codec you want to use here is always libx264. You can use 265 if you want, but 264 is much faster and produces generally the same quality results. 265 uses less bitrate, so if you're unless your upload is ridiculously slow and you're using dial-up, you're going to want to use this. So I'm going to set the preset to be slow, the CRF level to be 21, that usually works out pretty well. And let's do the audio codec. For this one, I'm going to use lib opus, which is the newest audio codec that works fantastically. At like 64 kilobytes a second, it beats AAC which is running at 128 kilobytes a second. So I'm going to use lib opus. Audio bitrate will be 128k, which is more than enough. And I'm going to set it to be dot forward slash out dot mkv. Dot mkv makes it a Matroska output, which can contain literally anything, which is why I always use it. So let's go see how this will work. <laughs> Lowly, that's how this will work. 16 frames per second. I'll be back because. All right, about to finish here, and at 27 seconds is the end of it. Oh, it looks like it finished. Now it's just encoding the last little bits. Here we are. All right, with that re-encoding, which is actually ridiculously slow, we managed to cut the file size in about a th third, which actually, it encoded a lot slower than I thought it would. So I'm gonna try re-encoding it instead of the slow preset. Let's try using the super fast preset, which I think is the best bang for your buck. I think. Let's find out. So if I use super fast, FPS skyrockets, of course. This will be finished relatively soon. See the file size if it's already growing uncontrollably. Not really. We're about 10 seconds way through, so we're about a third of the way. And we're about... We're slightly smaller than this. Let's see here. We'll finish up in just a second. All right, so that is 57 megabytes. It managed to cut the file size in half. So even just re-encoding it at super fast is actually a good idea. And with the CRF level I used, let's use the slow one so you can see. Hey, let's go. All right, who is Everything's... this? Oh, oh, oh God, that was... Oh, same level of detail. You're nearby. Oh, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh jeez, oh jeez. Who are you running hey, from? Hey, would you would you like to would you like to hey, there you go. So there's re encoding it afterwards in case you're trying to optimize for file size. So that's pretty much all I can say for the recording thing. At least for using Blender, you can use whatever else you want, but Blender's the one I've got I taught you on. And in a little bit, you can see the final product of this entire video editing thing. Yay. And remember to put in your sources when you use them. Especially, you really got to check the licenses and copyright of any sounds, music, or videos that you use. Because sometimes you can get screwed pretty bad by that. So be careful there, too. Anyways, have fun editing. <laughs> and if anything else, leave it in the comments, because chances are I missed something important. Goodbye.
Hello, I'm back. I finished editing after 50 trillion years. You can check the time down there. I don't remember when I started. It was a long time ago. I did take a little break, but it wasn't very long. So you realize how long videos take to edit. That's the fun part. Yay. Anyways, I added a whole bunch of music up here. And all from Audionautics, all the music is. So I can just put a nice little thing in the description here. I'll show you where I got it. Audionautics. Place where it's YouTube friendly music. The only thing you have to do is down here somewhere. Credit this with music by audionautics.com and every single piece of music I got from there. And if you want to try using other things, YouTube gives its own audio library in the Creator Studio, which I think I talked about. I think I talked mostly about sound effects last time, this time audio, and it comes with a whole lot more. It includes audionautics, but I just chose to go straight with audionautics. They have a, quite a few popular ones used by quite a few famous YouTubers, so hey, they got pretty nice stuff. Anyways, on here. So, the only really big effect I did was this one, which is the one you saw edited. The rest of the effects are kind of small. Like this one here, I screamed what kind of sorcery. Over here is basically the same thing as over here. It's about the same way it's done. Let's see. And then, what, what do we got here? That, oh yeah. I kind of put that in my friend's face. So what all I did there to get it so that it would follow his face the whole way, like that, it's just, you know, keyframe maybe once in a while and make sure it's on his face. The scale of rotation, X and Y. I didn't change the scale on this one. I did the same sort of thing later on. Oh, this is just me getting sad. I got sad at one point, and so I edited that in. Also, I did do a cool keyframe thing here. Oh, sh here, I'll just play this real quick. Uh, oh, there's no audio, so we're good. So you can watch good this. Luck. Oh god, I dropped my bottle. Go, there's no go, point anymore. Go, 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 go. You see how it bounced down instead of just going straight into it? Let me show you what I did in the graph editor. Can't find it. Here we are, graph editor. Uh, click normalize usually so that everything isn't weird. I mean, everything's more or less jumbled together here. So rotation is what I did. Uh, I'm not selecting the right thing, am I? Here we are. Alright, here we are. So you can see it here on my rotation. Select, you gotta select both ends of it, and then you can see it does that weird bouncy thing at the end. How did I do that? There isn't any way to do it. Well, there is. You go under key, you go to interpolation type, and you have all these types you can use. What I used was bounce, so that it kind of goes fast at first and then slows down, contrary to the picture. It really depends on which way it's going, but you can see here, and it jumps down to it, and then kind of bounces and goes like half a side, bounces, goes half a side again, does that all the way down into nothing. And so that's the effect I did there. Let's see what other effects did I do. Let's find out. Do. Oh, I added this in because my friend freaked out, so he went, nah! So I added that little text effect, which just kind of goes in, and that's it. Over here. Oh, so I slapped. <laughs> slap. Basically, mean I tagged my friend. Or I got tagged, and I didn't know it, so I just put that across the screen. Over here, my friend tagged my other friend when he told him don't tag him. As you can see there, what a jerk. So I put that on his face to make him look like a jerk. Kinda. And this one, I just flat out disappeared, and they were freaking out because of it. And, ooh, at the very end, I added an end card. So let's take a look at this. So this end card is... Scary at first, but really it's nothing too special. You can do it pretty easily. So all it is is a video in the background that you see. And then I'll talk about the easy parts first. And then the subscribe thing and the double J472 thing. It's just one picture that I rendered earlier using like the text way earlier. The text method I was using. And then to get the videos layered on top of each other. What I did first is I added a black background and transformed it. Literally... If you zoom in on here, you can see there's like a black, then a blue, then the video. So the black is just a rectangle on both sides. The blue is the same thing, just slightly smaller rectangle. Not hide that so you don't hear any more of that. And then this is just a video, which I pulled from an older video I rendered so that we can use it on rendering on here. So I can, well, rendering here, <laughs> so I can use it to go back to. And then on top of all that, it puts a uh, subscribe. It doesn't really matter. Another thing I tend to do, but I didn't do this time, is I go down here, Shift A, Effect Strip, and Gaussian Blur. If you want to blur the background video. So you can do like 
15 and 15 you can see it blurs it the only problem with it is it is really resource intensive and i have no idea why gaussian blurs are really resource intensive and at the end i added an adjustment layer at the very very top what adjustment layers do are basically allow you to change only specific parts of the video because normally if you had something like a cross and a color and it went all the way across it would well for <laughs> for example here i don't want to cross every single like basically what the cross is here is it dissolve from what i did the video to that color but without the adjustment layer to have to do it with every single one of these green bars basically all the way down and that's no fun so i added an adjustment layer which changes everything below it to be affected by whatever you do to it which in that case i added a cross effect and it goes to black well actually if i went up here you could see it there go, it goes away and also i added music all over lots of music audio nautics kind of goes in and out i did add a record sound effect that's that's the only really sound effect real sound effect i did other than that, that's the whole video. Lots and lots of cuts, and that's it. All right. In that case, let's get to rendering this video. Let's unhide this so that you can actually hear the sound. And also, it used to be where you had to get rid of the proxy size right here. Now it doesn't matter. The proxy is automatically taken away. Proof of this is just if I rendered the end thing here. Rendered one image. Uh, well, it's motion blurred, but it's not. You can read the text there, basically. I should disable motion blur. All right, so now we just gotta render the video. I already have the preset things over here, and I'm probably gonna re-encode it so I don't ruin Netflix, because this is about Netflix watching time for everyone else in my house. So I'm gonna re-encode it so that uploading doesn't take five years. And that's, oh, there's one other thing I do. Before I even start rendering this, I'm gonna save it again. I'm gonna go pull over my text one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a thumbnail. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do actually a full copy of text so that I can keep everything here the way it is. And call this one thumb. Okay, making a thumbnail. This is the fun part, kind of. It depends on who you are. I actually like to make my thumbnails in Blender using the same sort of method you see here for like text editing. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go back to the video and pick out a frame to render. I can find one. Oh, maybe I can get one of my friend who's when he's hiding with that face. See, where was it? Was it here? No, it was right before it. Here we are. Kind of have a small face, but it's it's okay. I mean, I could try scaling up the face a little bit if I really wanted to. It wouldn't actually ruin anything because it stays on the same spot. But hey, let's use this image. See there? Image. Save as an image. Um, background. You can see this folder filled up fast of all sorts of PNGs everywhere. Let's save that. Yeah, here's what the folder actually looks like with everything else. Just PNGs, music files, like one sound effect. I think that's it. Oh no, second sound effect. There's a few sound effects, actually. And then there's a the record scratch. Three sound effects, yeah. But you get the idea. That folder fills up pretty quick. All right, so we have this as a thumb background, thumbnail background. So let's get you out of there. That's my background. And here we are. So let's go add the plane for the background. Scale it in the X direction 16 times. Scale it in the Y direction nine times. That's a 16 by nine aspect ratio I'm scaling it to. I'm gonna move it down a little bit so it's under that text. Scale it to be slightly over the edges. This picture will be slightly zoomed in, but you won't really notice it. Add new material and go into the node editor because this is going to be a special material with the picture on it. Really, it's not too impossibly hard. Image texture, I went to Shift A, texture, image texture there. Color goes over there. Shift A, input texture coordinate. Pick generated there, put it into there. Open the image. I think it was. There it is, thumb back. Open that up, and if I were to render this image right now, there, there it is. Except it's not called JJ's Gone. That's that was just one part. Uh, also, it helps if you change the viewport settings on here. So, for example, I'm going to change this to red. I think I'm going to keep it the same color. There we are. Viewport color for materials so that they, you know, actually stay there. Let's see. 
Now we gotta name this. Maybe, yeah, actually I think that's okay. I'm gonna change the way the font renders with the outlines, which is in freestyle settings. I'm gonna change it to actually be nine thick. So this is gonna be some really thick lines. But it's for further better. Oh wait, I forgot. YouTube has a maximum size on thumbnails, and that actually is gonna affect this here. Not a maximum size, but a maximum file size. So I'm gonna set this to 720p so that we can actually fit it. YouTube has an upload limit of I think two megabytes. And 1080p thumbnails slightly goes over that, so we're gonna use 720p thumbnails. In that case, I'm gonna have to go over and reduce the freestyle line size again. Back down to six. This be faster to render too. Yeah, it's fine. Zoom in all the way, everything looks okay. You can see it's a little grainy around the edges. If you wanted to fix the graininess, you'd have to go here. You go to sampling. Sampling presets, you can choose it to final, or you can just go over here and increase that number, the render number, and that just increases how many pretty much samples it takes for the render at a certain point. This will make the render take longer, of course, as you can see here, but it won't be as grainy. As you can see, there's like no grain at all when you take this long to render, which isn't actually worth it that much. So I'm going to put it down to 12 there. And if you can, use the GPU to render. It's faster, usually. If it's not faster, then your CPU is way overpowered and you should get a new GPU. So here it's reasonably less grainy. I'll keep it like this. Yeah, we're good. Oh, and it's going to do stroke rendering too. Get you out of there. Good. Image. Save this image. And the actual thumb. Now, I'm just going to call it thumb. And I'm going to put this in the regular folder so it's really easy to find. Save. Save. And we're good with that part. So let's go open this back up. And, well, we're pretty much done now. Just render out the video, reconvert it if you want, or change the settings here. Although, if you put the bitrate smaller here, it'll look much worse in the video. It's better off to encode a high bitrate here and then fix it later. Because Blender really needs to fix their export settings. Other than that, yeah, we're pretty good. Solid thumbnail, too. Should be good now. So, bye. Have fun editing. Don't steal my style. I mean, I guess you can. I mean, I showed you how to use my style. Make sure you save often. I don't know why I do this. Okay, bye. Hiding. Or seeking. Um, hey, us. Okay, Alex, let's go. Oh, is it this? Let's go it's places. The, it's the is random. This, this, follow me. Okay, he just knocked over a barrel. You just totally gave away your position. Good job. Hope you're proud. Uh -uh. Yeah, you did. Everything's lost.